Hello everyone, my main account is about to turn 2 years old, so it's time for another review. In case you have seen my first one, I tried to keep the format roughly the same, and I also draw a few comparisons to the progress made in year 1 to see what changed. To start us off, I go over my character, weapon and artifact count, then a little segment about money, I know a lot of people are always curious on how much people spend on these types of games, and in the end I'll show every build in detail while going over some random facts. Speaking of random facts, here's the first one, if you were to ask me about my 3 favorite characters, you see them on screen right now. As for limited 5 stars, I went from 4 last year to 11 right now, 14 in total if you include constellations, C1, Yai, Ayaka and Ganyu, and C0, Yelan, Ayato, Shenhe, Kokomi, Yoimiya, Kazuha, Hutao and Klee. As for standard 5 stars, I'm still 4 out of 5, no Mona to this day. And I have 12 of them in total, Constellation 4 Kitchen, Constellation 3 Chi Chi, Constellation 1 Jean and Constellation 0 Diluc. As for 4 star characters, I have everyone except for 4 of them, Shinobu, Dori, Goro and Sara. And I'm at 13 Constellation 6 4 stars, 14 if you include C5 Bennett. As for characters I have actually built, I went from 18 last year to 32 in total right now, not including the Traveler, 17 fully ascended, 15 at Ascension level 5. As for crowns, I used 21 of them and you will see later on which characters when I go over the builds. As for weapons, I went from 5 5 star weapons last year to a total of 9 right now and as for refinements, one of them is refinement rank 5 and two of them refinement rank 2. As for 4 star weapons, I have a total of 21 at level 90 and at this point most of them are refinement rank 5. As for artifacts, I went from 116 artifacts at plus 20 last year to a total of 232 right now. I also put a breakdown of the sets I'm using on screen and of course I won't go over every single artifact but you will see the ones I'm using later when I show the builds. Ironically enough, my best artifact is actually an attack percentage cap, so not a lot of characters want to use it but luckily I've Shane for this. It's 7 max rolls and 2 mid rolls which puts it at around 93% substat efficiency. No perfect 100% artifact yet, maybe next year. Now for the interesting part, how much money did I spend on Genshin Impact? This year I had the blessing of the Welkin Moon up permanently which adds up to 60 bucks, that's it. So if I add that to the year 1 spending of 475 euros it adds up to a total of 535. The euro crash pretty hard so this actually converts to the exact same amount of USD. You could probably get a more accurate number if you account for the craziness that happened with the markets this year but honestly I can't be bothered to do that. The main reason why I spent so much less this year was because I was simply new to gacha. Sometimes I'm a little impulsive with my spending habits. Gacha is obviously uh, really good at exploiting that. Yes, I dislike Gacha, but don't get me wrong, I'm not against spending, I'm not even faulting MiHoYo as much for this, it's a company who's just trying to get its profits. The problem here is more on a legislative level, in my opinion. Alright, now I will show every character, feel free to pause when you're interested in a build and it's going too fast. Same as last time, while I do this, I will talk about some random stuff related to this account, just so that there is something to listen to. If I remember correctly, then this is a day 2 account and I do believe that I logged in every day since then. This year I also hit adventure rank 60 on June 8th. In terms of non-repeatable content, I'm pretty much done in every region. Though to be fair, I'm not someone who runs around and looks for every single chest or gets 100% exploration progress everywhere. At the end I show the Hoyo Lab account statistics side in case you are interested in those numbers. Same for achievements, I'm not a particular achievement hunter, for me it's very much about gameplay. Building characters and using them while exploring or doing combat related things is what I like doing in this game. The story is definitely enjoyable but I'm not gonna lie, I skip most of which is not voice acted. By the way, one thing that really annoys me about that is, why is there an autoplay button for dialogue but it still gets interrupted by completely irrelevant dialogue options. This game doesn't have branching storylines and yes I'm aware of hangouts but I'm talking about the Archon quest. What you choose doesn't matter, so why do we have an autoplay feature that still requires inputs? That's just bizarre to me. 
Anyway, aside from this, I do all the repeatable content like events, daily commissions, abyss and the city reputation missions. For the most part that also includes resin, which I believe is also reflected in my artifact quality. I probably spent like 85% of it on artifact domains. I'm not gonna say that resin was never kept for me though, if I had to guess, maybe like a week was wasted. Speaking about a week, weekly bosses, until very recently I used to do them all, but about a month ago I decided to just leave it at doing the latest three with the discount. Doing the other ones without needing the materials, so basically just for a small chance to get a weapon prototype drop, didn't feel worth it anymore. I'm actually curious on your take on that, do you still do them all? At this point I just finished painting the picture of my daily or weekly ritual. The serenity pot shop, of course the highest priority there is the resin. And then I actually buy experience books over artifact experience. There aren't too many artifacts that are potential upgrades for me anyway, so I'm good on that. The parametric transformer that eats like 150 apples or something, it's worth it, but that is the one thing I always forget about. For regular farming I'm not running around picking up 2 star artifacts or things like that. If it's a day where I don't want to experiment with a certain characters or synergies, then I'm pretty much logging off after 30 minutes. In the beginning I randomly mentioned my 3 favorite characters, in case you're curious why, for this I actually for once take the whole package into consideration, not just gameplay, but the way their personality is portrayed or aesthetics as well. I mean just by looking at the characters you can probably already see a certain preference I have. As for personality, there is probably a little more variety there. Whenever there's a scene with the eye, I can't help but smile, I like her playful nature. Ningguang, the complete opposite, doesn't seem to care too much about traditions, especially in regards to the gods. She is all business, which I think is fascinating. Ryan Chugun, the puppet I believe is the playable character, so no emotions or compassion there. Not really my thing, but playing her is just a lot of fun. As for the other two, they are actually kind of similar. The interaction between elemental skill into burst skill, which resets the elemental skill again, for some weird irrational reason I find pressing those buttons super satisfying. There are two more things I want to mention, which I get easily annoyed by and not take part in. Just a fair warning for you right now. And no, it's not Garcha, that discussion probably doesn't belong in this video. It's daily logins on the Hoyo Lab website and web events. Of course, they are just tools to promote their social media platforms, which is fine, and I'm not interested in either of them, though I'm sure there are people who genuinely enjoy web events, and that's also fine. What I take issue with is that they add a Primo Gem reward to them, which essentially is just functioning as another FOMO mechanic. It kind of makes me feel dirty and used if someone offers me freebie just to grow their social media presence. Especially if things like the in-game surveys reward is 30k gold. They probably are the biggest feedback channel between players and devs. It makes me wonder how much Mihoyo actually cares about feedback seeing how much of a lower incentive they place on that. That's just my personal opinion. I might sound like an old man saying this. But can't I just play a game, Genshin Impact, without getting redirected 500 times to expand the Hoyo Metaverse or whatever that shit is called? To be fair, I'm missing out on maybe 3 wishes per patch. If it was a significant number, I probably wouldn't be high roading right here. I totally admit that. Alright, that's all I have to say for now. There's a little over a minute left on this clip, I just let it roll out and come back after that.
Alright, we made it to the end. I hope this was somewhat interesting to you. It definitely is for myself. In some ways, it was even surprising. For example, my character roster nearly doubling wasn't something I expected since the game launched with a pretty big character cast. And I thought that fact would inflate the amount of characters you would build in year one, but it doesn't seem to slow down significantly. This is also reflected in the artifact count that actually exactly doubled, which means I was still allocating my resources in a similar way as I was in the previous year. Anyway, that's it. Stay tuned for more videos. Until then, have fun and bye-bye.